Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. We have a, another video for you today. This is your favorite octopus MS4 coordinator. Now today we're going to be talking about water pollution, what it does to animals, and uh, how we can stop it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you some pictures. And uh, the first one is a bunch of pollution. And it's on top, down in, it's, it's all in the water. The second picture is pollution that is actually down in, but the majority, if you look real close, it's all floating on the water. A terrible looking mess, but this is what happens. And our third picture, these are pipes, outfalls. These outfalls are not protected at all. And this is a bunch of pollution going right in to the ocean. Lastly, is a picture of our beautiful planet, our world. The picture on the right shows our world with smoke and flames. And that's potentially what could happen if we don't get a handle on all the pollution that we're doing around our earth. I would like to show you one of our MS4 brochures that we hand out. Uh, and for people locally here in LaPorte, Indiana, we are at the um, Purdue Extension Building and Solid Waste, we're in there with them. But this is an MS4 brochure. And basically when you look in the inside, there's all different kinds of information of what you can, can't do in a pictorial form as well as words. So even the little guys and the little girls in the house could look at this and understand it. One is when we're cooking and stuff at home and in our kitchens, uh, we don't want to pour the grease and the fat and all that kind of stuff down our drains because that can plug pipes. Do not dispose of everyday household chemicals down our sinks, down our toilets, because you know that, that stuff goes wastewater treatment plant or wherever it goes and if it doesn't get filtered out, it, it could damage our ecosystem. Do not flush or put down the kitchen sink extra pills and medications and that kind of stuff because oddly enough, Wastewater treatment plants uh, in general cannot filter out the substances within those pills. Do not use your um, toilets at home for paper towels and use, use it as a waste, uh, like a waste basket because first of all, you can plug your own pipes and second of all, uh, that stuff just, it goes into the infrastructure system and it can lock the systems all up. Avoid using your kitchen disposal for solid items because solid items sometimes don't work very well and they don't cut up well. That's a bad practice. One thing interesting is, as, as we all know, uh, in our toilets, we get skid marks, but that's because the industry has decided, and EPA and government officials, that we use more efficient toilets now. Why? Because we don't want to flush three gallons down if we can do it with a gallon or a gallon and a quarter or a gallon and a half, we're actually saving water. When you do your laundry, it's always best to do the biggest loads possible versus a lot of small loads. Because again, we're wasting water as far as putting more water into our systems that could get plugged. It's just a, more of a water conservation practice. Along with that, we want to use just use a little amount of soap to get the same cleaning capacity versus a whole bunch of it. Also, uh, for those of you that maybe have the stuff in the garage or in your pantry or on the side or whatever, um, herbicides, pesticides, those types of items, we want to use those sparingly because there could be a problem with our ozone, there could be air pollution that goes along with those kind of things. So we want to use that, those as discreetly as possible. And always remember, dispose of them properly. Don't just throw them in your waste can. Usually most of the solid waste companies have special disposal areas for those kinds of products. So now for your pleasure, we're gonna show you a few little experiments to show you and display what we're talking about. So we're gonna just do a little Susie Homemaker experiment here. We're just gonna put some regular canola oil in water. Look at the bubbles. It's all sitting on the top like oil does. Look at all that. I could stir it, and you know what? It's still going to sit on the top. And it's still all on the top. See that little line right there? 
about a quarter to a half inch. That's our oil. Now we're going to do the dishes. We're going to put a little soap in here for the dishes. So the soap, the soap is all stirring all around and whatever. Matter of fact, we better add a little more because we have a lot of dishes to do. And we're going to stir that up a little bit. We're stirring in the sake of speed in our experiment and to show you what we're doing. Kind of a yucky look there, huh? And guess it's what's happening? The oil is still getting thicker and thicker and back where it was. And when we first put it in and I was stirring it, it was not even half of that. Goes to what we were talking about with some of our basic items of what happens with stormwater. You got vehicles, you got oils, you got brake fluids, transmission fluid, brake dust, and all that stuff. Well, stuff gets on the road and when it gets in stormwater, this is what it does. It floats at the top. And so there, whenever, wherever the outfall is and it's falling to some place, guess what? This is our pollution. And for our experiment number two, we're going to show you some common household items, everyday items, and items that uh, really, when they don't go to the wastewater treatment plant, uh, they can cause extreme pollution. Up, we're just gonna put a little bit of that in here. Would you like a cup of tea, Mom? Here. You can see how it's moving and spreading around. And imagine if that's motor oil, oil from your transmissions, cleaning out your radiator in your car and you're just going to pour it down the drain. No. This is the kind of stuff that it's just a presentation, but this is how the stuff actually moves and dissipates in water. Might be a little bit, that was only a few drops of this food coloring, but look what it's doing. This is what happens with everyday household chemicals, stuff that we pour down our drains or the stuff that we pour down inlets out on the road. Those are all no-nos. And this is what MS4 is about. Trying to keep the water that you first saw crystal clear and clean versus this. For our last experiment, your favorite MS4 shark coordinator is going to show you a little representation of what happens when we get pollutants, oils, gases, greases in our water. And for our experiment, we are, we're actually going to use real hand sanitizer. So we're just going to put some hand sanitizer in here. It's burning. See the fumes? That is actually burning. You don't see a real big flame because of the kind of item we used. But it's burning. If you look real close, you can see all the heat waves going across the concrete. That may not look like that's burning. I guarantee you that's burning. And, and you can see the alcohol that, that was actually in that is also dissipating in the air. MS4 is trying to prevent this stuff getting in our waters and our local waterways because there is a lot of items that runs off from factories, from industry, regular household goods, household products. We're trying to prevent this happening. So I want to say thank you to all of you that are watched our video today. A little representation of uh, kind of what MS4 does and tries to prevent. And remember, uh, press the red button to become a subscriber and we do our videos and upload them uh, every other Monday. Again, thank you from your favorite Shark MS4 coordinator.